Okay, well, on that note, let's tell you what our wise experts have to say as we head into trade this morning. Uh, Indrajit Bhatia of Macquarie says, they met a number of European investors last week with a lot of discussions around potential election scenarios. The recent rally in India is attributed more to global risk on than optimism on elections. This means more liquidity can come in post-elections. There was a lot of discussion on the property sector. Key large-cap stocks where they got some pushback were Yes Bank and Reliance Industries. Banks are the most consensus holding amongst investors. Okay, there's more uh, uh, macro advice on for equity investors. James K. Lord of Morgan Stanley says their decision to turn bullish on emerging markets started well but was looking less clever by Friday. Mm -hmm. He says they are not so worried about the yield curve inversion in the US as they believe European and China macro data are more important. Morgan Stanley says bullish on emerging markets as they expect the dollar will weaken. Uh, Morgan Stanley also remains neutral on emerging markets loans or emerging markets credits. Okay, let's also get you some money market views. Uh, Bhaskar Panda of HDFC Bank says the Reserve Bank's swap offering today needs to be watched out for. There could be demand for the dollar as we approach a month end and financial year end. He expects the dollar INR to remain volatile in a broad range between 68.90 to 69.30 for today. And on bonds, Bhaskar Panda says they have remained range-bound and uh, will remain so before the RBI policy. For today, he expects the 10-year benchmark cordial to remain within the 7.45 to 7.5 range. Okay, let's talk about the global queues then. Here's Nigel with the world view. The U.S. markets ended mixed. The Dow managed to eke out some gains in yesterday's trading session. The big headline was Robert Mueller's uh, investigation on Trump's election uh, campaign. That got a green shade that there was no collusion with Russia. And on the back of that, that was good news. Why is that good news? Because now the Trump administration can really focus on the U.S.-China trade talks. And that was perfectly depicted in uh, one of those, uh, you know, uh, depictors in terms of how is the street viewing the U.S.-China trade talks. Caterpillar ended high with a gain of close to 100 percent, telling you there is some optimism that we'll get a positive outcome coming out of there. Boeing as well was up close to around 2 percent. Now, U.S. Uh, carriers, they are testing the new software that they're putting out on the MAX 737. So both those two were higher. That explains why the Dow ended higher in yesterday's trading session. The European markets, they were trading in the red when we, when we were, uh, you know, winding up. And they ended in the red as well, slowing global uh, growth attentions. That's something that really played out out there. And in yesterday, we had two stocks that went focus. One was Louis Vuitton. The stock was down close to around 8% odd. That was attributed to a fashionable fat finger. So that stock recovered, ending in the green with a gain of around a percent. Bayer as well was down close to around 3 percent. Barfa ML had downgraded the stock. So th those are both the two stocks that were in focus. This morning, though, the Nikkei is higher. The dollar yen has moved from around the 109.6 odd mark to above the 110 odd mark. So that is one market that's doing well. And the rest of Asia as well is bouncing back after the sharp cut that we saw yesterday. Brent crude prices continue holding closer towards $67.5 per barrel. You know, we're talking about various cut down all over the globe. So on the back of that, some support, though slowing growth is something that's hampering that. SGX Nifty for the time being, indicating a flattish to a mildly positive start. Back to you guys. Okay, we'll take that green with both our hands. Thank you very much for that, Nigel.